Okay, um, you know, good win today. Uh, we talked right really hard about playing playing good football for 60 minutes, you know, putting good stuff on tape for 60 minutes. And, you know, like any football game, we know there's going to be swings, highs and lows. I thought our guys handled that well. You know, we get a pump block, nobody panicked. Um, defense continued to play, you know, great football. Um, and then obviously defense scored for us there in the second half. So another another big play by the defense. Offensively, obviously, we got to go in there where we scored three straight because Sessions. Thought Philip played especially well. The whole game was was in control, accurate, um, really played well. Um, you know, and then it was just sixty minute game, um, sixty minute game. That's what we want to do. We just want to keep getting a little bit better every week. So really proud of the way the guys hung in there and played uh, to the final whistle. Just a couple notes on injuries. Um, you know, Ty is out with the groin. Um, Ashton was out with the knee, and then Rock uh, was being evaluated for concussion. And then. You know, just also say, um, you know, we, we did well offensively, you know, in situational football. That continues to be important. That's two games in a row now, so we got to build on that momentum, right? Good on third down, good in the red zone. So we got to keep building on that. All right, Bob Kravitz, you want to start us off? Hey, Frank, uh, you guys talked last year about not living in momentum. Now you're five and two for the second straight year. Um, what is different about this team, and will you handle the team differently? this time around as opposed to last year? I mean, really, no, great question. Um, our MO, our DNA is to handle these situations, right? It's 1-0 every week. It's get 1% better every week. Um, that's really all we're going to focus on. Um, it really comes down to, you know, getting our players, you know, get putting together good plans in all three phases. It comes, you know, practicing hard. Right, preparing hard, practicing hard, and then getting better. So, um, you know, I think we can, Bob, you know, learn from last year. I mean, we won't talk too much about that. I mean, we really won't. Last year was last year. It's a different team. Um, we're just going to focus on trying to build from where we are Thanks. right now. Mike Chapel. Frank, you always talk about going offensively with the hot hand. What goes into Jordan Wilkins and Naheem Hines? Two guys are really are looked at as complementary players. And they said, you know, great games today. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they really did. Um, you know, Jordan, I mean, you guys know how we feel about Jordan. So, um, yeah, I guess he's complimentary in one sense, but I don't look at any. Yeah, I mean, in that sense, in that somebody's got to start and Jonathan, Jonathan's doing that. So, but we have a lot of confidence in Jordan. Um, he, he played especially well today. So we kind of rode his hot hand a little bit and just was seeing it well, great balance and, some great runs. Obviously, Naheem, you know, made a couple of big plays. So, um, yeah, we just want to continue to build. I was happy with, you know, we struggled to run it early and obviously disappointed in that, but we stuck with it, you know, afforded where it were afforded the opportunity to stick with it because of how the defense is playing. And I think this is kind of an example of what we've talked about it, you know, in past weeks, you know, when the defense is playing that good, it allows the offense, allows us to be more patient and then we can build um, momentum you know, in the run game like we did in the second Quick follow-up. Did you anticipate what Naheem Hines was going to do after his touchdowns? And how did you get him on him? No. Yeah, no. I mean, I've seen him do that a number of times. So I don't have any problem with it. Um, you know, we like our guys showing emotion when they're when they're celebrating. they got to do their thing. So I trust trust Naheem to, to display his emotions the way he feels, uh, the way he wants to. Joel Erickson. Frank, is there any uh, chance that Jordan Wilkins now becomes more of a one-one punch with Jonathan Taylor that he starts getting, or that he, his role gets increased at the expense of Jonathan after this game? Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's really early to tell you. I mean, I can tell you, we think very highly of Jordan. So we'll look at this film. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's a question of you know Jordan just getting the hot hand. Things didn't come up maybe right for Jonathan. So we'll evaluate it. We, we want to continue to use all three of those running backs. However it plays out, um, we believe in all three of them. They all are different. You know, it's kind of like our tight ends. You know, as you guys know how we look at our tight ends, I kind of look at our backs like that a little bit as well. So we'll continue to use all three of their skills. Kevin Bowen. Frank, did you think coming into this game, Jordan would have a big part in the game plan? Or is this something where we're not getting it done with Jonathan early on, we need to try something else. Yeah, no, I, w I was not thinking, um, I mean, I, w I was thinking that Jordan would contribute and, and play well, but it wasn't like, 
you know, hey, it wasn't like we were saying, hey, hey if we don't run the ball well early, let's switch it up. That, that was never discussed. Um, it just kind of happened. You know, I typically, when I'm scripting the first 15, 20 plays, just so you, I mean, not that it's a big, doesn't really matter, it's not a secret, but like I will intentionally give Jordan a few carries. I'll give Jonathan most of the carries. I'll put Jordan in for a couple and him in for a couple. I like to spread it out a little bit in the first 15, get a feel, you know, get a feel like that a little bit and um, and see how it's going and just spreading it out anyway, because they all have, they all have different, um, you know, they all have different gifts. So yeah, it just, and then Jordan got the hot hand. So we wrote it. All right, we'll go three more. Stephen Holder. Frank, we, we spent a lot of time talking about big plays on offense, but you, you got, <clears throat> excuse me, you're getting a lot of your big plays this year from defense. And I'm just wondering just what kind of, I guess, how, how does that separate a defense? You know, you, you guys, the yards and all that, but then when you make the big plays, how does that separate them? Yeah, I mean, we're getting some massive plays from the defense, obviously. Anytime you're scoring on defense, it's such a huge deal, um, such a huge deal. So um, I, you know, I just credit A, that's playmakers, right? I mean, the way that happens, the way you make plays is playmakers. So that's first and foremost a credit to our defensive players. Secondly, you know, I mean, uh, I think the defensive staff has done a good job of getting those guys and putting them in good position. So um, we need to keep building on that, right? We need to keep building on that every week. You know, I did think, you know, we made a few, we made a few couple massive plays on offense as well today. You know, the, inter the uh, interference call it was a great savvy play by a, a veteran quarterback to know we got a third and forever and, you know, put it up where you got a chance to get, throw the kind of ball that you get a chance for that call. And then we hit the big box to Zach um, and then a couple big in cuts to Marcus Johnson, you know, were really big plays on offense um, as well. So we really, Steven, you're exactly right, right? Defensively, we've been getting those. And uh, I feel like offensively we've had our share and we just need to keep building right in both phases and, and in special teams as well. Greg Doyle. Hi, Frank. Um, you guys, your, your, your philosophy, your offense, it's, it's been run the damn ball and that you want that to be your identity. Um, it, it feels like that can change given how effective Philip is. Um, your defense lets you, uh, it's a long question, but so please don't transcribe all this, but uh, your defense gave you the option to be patient with the run. But Phillips' accuracy kind of carried you early. Anyway, what well, my point is: Do you guys know what you're on offense yet, or are you kind of does it depend on how good Philip is? No, I think that's a good observation. I mean, you know, we are with Philip as a quarterback. You know, we're learning what we are. You know, we you go in. It's like any any team, right? Any organization. You know, you go in with an identity, and and with an with a vision of where you want to go, um, and then you adapt as you have to given your players. And, you know, there is something, you know, there is something about with Philip as our quarterback that's slightly different than the last two years. Um, and so, you know, we'll continue to figure that out and to play to those strengths. I mean, he, he played exceptionally good football today. Um, not only with the way he threw the ball and the accuracy, but some decisions that he made along the way and a couple of checks that he got us into. So, um, you know, we'll continue to play to his, his strength. He's, he's only one player on the team, but certainly, a key player for us. Thank you. All right, last one, Jamaiello. Yeah, Frank, I was just, I know you have great linebacker depth, but does this team feel different, especially early in the game with, with Darius Leonard? Because I, mean, I think we saw in the first couple of halves, the last couple of games that you've seen, he said, you know, he even said they lack some energy. Obviously, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah. yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, you know how, how strong we feel about our linebacking core, the whole group. But Darius is a unique player, and anytime we can have him out there, you know, making the plays that he makes, um, doing the things that he does, he's just he's he's a unique player. So, and then not to mention a, a great emotional leader. So they complement each other, but certainly Darius, you know, is is the leader of that defense in many respects. So we first and foremost with his playmaking ability. So love it when he's out there, and the plays that he makes, the way the energy that he brings, um, you know, he definitely. He definitely gets us going on deep. Quick follow is just: Have you seen? Did you see this this kind of breakout coming from Taekwon with a little more a little more play time today? Yeah, and uh, you know Taekwon, you know played well against uh, Cincinnati and has continued to practice well. So you know we need to, you know we got we talk about playing eight defensive linemen. 
Um, and, and we've been trying to mix it up a little bit more. That's been part of the plan, part of the discussion now really for a couple of weeks. And we're, we're trying to morph to that uh, as we feel more and more comfortable. 